to stop the live, then we can just close it and it will stop, right? Yes. Once okay. we close. Yeah. Okay. I'm learning, Shaila. So am I. We all are. <laughs> you are live now. We are live now? So we are live, Vikas, we are live yes, on? you are live. Excellent. So we're going to get into this right now. Yeah. Welcome, everyone, to all the listeners. Today, we are going to start once again. We are one Freedom of Free Spirit Aid, a podcast series that we started a few weeks ago now. And first of all, I would like to uh, tell all our listeners that today, our beautiful host, Bic, she is not well. So we will be missing her for today's episode. But nevertheless, we are going to start this and we are going to continue with this beautiful series because this is all about our emotional well-being that we are all uh, into that today. So we did re uh, recently we did some beautiful topics, um, self-awareness, ego, control, emotional reactions, relationships, addictions, you name it. They all connected connections. Happiness is now today we are going to do is a topic called happiness. And what a beautiful soul that we have today to discuss this topic. So, but before we go to that further, I want to tell all the listeners that this is a freedom of free spirited. We are one, a topic that we started a few weeks ago, uh, trying to see, make sure that we all are in this together in this uncertain, uncertain times. And we, everybody are looking for that extra blissful, wishful moments, which is called so-called happiness. Now, happiness is what, whether it can be described, whether it is a thing called happiness or whether it is something that is embedded what it is we are going to uncover this beautiful topic today that we are going to and people analyze people too much analyze about and they are always looking for happiness but do they really know what is happiness or do they really understand what happiness means as a human being as an emotional being that we are we come with all these emotions of sadness nervousness, happiness, and we all think that this is happiness, we label them, but really what is happiness? So let's uncover this beautiful topic. And today we have got our beautiful speaker who I wish to interview her just before with her real experiences just a couple of weeks ago, I think. And uh, it was beautiful to uncover a journey that she's a multifaceted speaker she is not just a speaker, she's a healer, she's a coach, and she is into this. And at a very young age, she has been into this emotional well being, so called, trying to find herself, trying to find her beautiful soul that what is the purpose of her soul on this planet. And she has experienced herself. It's not something taken out of the book. It's not something she read from somewhere, but she has gone and herself did at a very young age when she was, I think, not even major, 18. I think she before 18, she started this journey. Um, so I am delighted. I'm excited to talk to her more about this topic and uncover more for our audiences, for our listeners who would really try to resonate and understand what really happiness is today. So without further um, getting into more, I would invite Shaila Kumar, who is here with us and who is going to tell us more about herself. So I'm not going to talk more about herself. I'm going to let her talk about herself, what she is and who she is. But definitely the topic is very much interested and excited to, to do this Take, take it further. So Shaila, I am now putting this mic to you and I want to tell to our audiences how and why and who you are and how you have, what you have become today and what you want to really uncover yourself more because you are a spiritual and this is a series of freedom of free spirited where you are 
all the speakers are allowed to talk about their spirited with freely and rather than you know something that we can't do this or we can't do that so let me introduce and put it back to Shela. Shela, tell us more about yourself. Yeah, thank you, Shailish. I'm super grateful and excited to be here. And I think that it would be suitable to go back to the start of my journey um, because what I was truly seeking was happiness. That's, that's what started my quest was a realization that I wasn't happy living a life that everybody else told me I needed to live. And in present day society, there's a huge push for mm -hmm. us to seek happiness outside of ourselves. And it's one of the biggest misconceptions. For me, happiness, the way I see it, it can only be experienced from within. It can only be experienced from within. So when we embark upon a journey of, um, you know, finding our roots, finding our spiritual roots, mm -hmm. we are, we're presented with all of the the places in our previous life that no longer align you know like when the vision comes in we cannot unsee what we've what we've already seen and so for me that meant that i needed to completely leave everything that i knew as life and i needed to go out and explore and find myself so that's what i did at 18 and it was a it was a beautiful wild ride and six years later I am now the founder and CEO of Gamma Evolution LLC, where I work as a professional metaphysical practitioner. And my passion really is to inspire other people to take a second to look within themselves because that's where we find everything. And I think it's one of the most difficult things to do because when I say everything, it's everything. It's both the shadow and the light. And, uh, yeah, shadow and the yeah. light, yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. so yeah so i just wanted to just before you continue this i wanted to see is when you say happiness is it something that you born with it is it something that you bring along with it is it something that you want to create around you and inside you or what exactly is this happiness term mm, yes that's a great question happiness from my perspective is a frequency it is an emotion and each emotion has its own particular frequency. Mm -hmm. So as human beings, we have the ability to ride the emotional roller coaster and based off of our thoughts and our beliefs about ourselves, determine sure. what emotions we feel. Um, so happiness, tapping into the essence of happiness or any vibration, it's a matter of aligning our personal vibration with wow. the vibration of happiness. Mm -hmm. So it makes a lot more sense um, to look through the lens um, of this world not being physical and there being an energetic counterpart to everything that that we're experiencing. So something that maybe let's say triggers the feeling of unhappiness, right. of not feeling good, that whatever that situation may be is on a lower vibration. When we experience happiness, it's more so a feeling of contentness, like a feeling of, of satisfaction. Like, like a blissful? Okay like a blissful pleasantness what how would I you think it, I think it leads into that like bliss is one of the okay. highest frequencies so happiness wow. is kind of like on that stepping stone okay. to the bliss mm -hmm. frequency oh good right yeah because I I in my world I only feel that when you said that I only feel two things which is pleasantness and unpleasantness because sometimes you feel what you are looking for always is the pleasantness to me is whatever whether you eat whether you sleep we had a good sleep then you feel energetic and very much happy about it that you don't feel any resentment or resistance or anything like that negativity doesn't come a lot near to you right uh, so something of that sort where i feel that pleasantness and unpleasantness are the only two things but then um, people and we humans are always looking for these terms. So when you are sad, we say we are sad. When we are happy, we say happy. And when we are more like emotional seriousness and trying to analyze that time we are lost into a different direction. And we make those moments a completely unknown moments, which we don't want to remember sometimes. And sometimes we do want to uh, find our own direction through that moment so happiness to you as you said rightly like yeah it's within 
it comes from within and if you're looking for that. So how would you describe uh, happiness? Is it, is it a thing called happiness? Is it something that you can say that I can buy somewhere and I can pay somewhere and buy this happiness? Or is it something that we could just experience it or just make uh, create happiness? What, what's your take on it? Okay, that's, that's really interesting. Um, so happiness is, you can't go to the store and pay money to get happiness. Happiness mm. can only be generated and felt from within. So mm. anytime we're out and about in life, having wonderful experiences, feeling the, um, feeling elation, feeling happy and grateful, it's because we ourselves are allowing ourselves to feel that emotion. And in order to feel these elevated emotions, we have to feel like we're in a, in a safe space. So being around people that are, you know, safe and supportive of us along our journey. So, okay, let's come back to what you, you asked. Can you go yeah. to the store and can you buy happiness? Mm -hmm. A sad person who walks into the grocery store and, and tries to buy something to make them happy, that thing will never bring them happiness. Sure. But let's say, let's say a happy person walks mm -hmm. into the grocery store. They're mm -hmm. already happy. And they get something that may maybe they need or is going to benefit their life somehow. And so that object is going to, it's not going to be the source of happiness, but it may increase or elevate the happiness. Right, right. Does that make sense? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah so, so, so when, because you have done so many things and you think that by doing things, you, you, you have happiness or by doing things, you create happiness. So like, just like you said, Sometimes some people want to buy something, not because just they want it, but there is a need. And then when they get that need satisfied, when they get their want satisfied, then they feel contentment or, or happiness uh, is generated out of that, which is perfectly what I feel most of the people we humans are prone to our emotional desires or emotional visions that we would like to have. Mm -hmm. But in terms of what you have achieved at a very young age, and you have done, you have been doing so many things. Like I, I, I can't, I can't think, I can't ex ex appreciate the way you have achieved. Whether it is yoga, whether it is coaching, whether it is you know, uh, all sorts of things that you have been doing. Um, but is that you are doing it to create happiness, or you are doing it because you are happy? That's why you are doing it. Wonderful question. Um, yeah. I am doing it because I am happy. So I never intended to take this path. Like it was absolutely in the back of my mind, almost as like a fantasy of like, wow, that would be so cool to yeah. be able to just help um, people or pass along the tools, pass along what helped me. Um, and truth be told, people just started coming to me. Well, you know, divine timing. I had reached a certain vibrational state where I could yeah. now bring other people into my sphere. So um, where I'm at today, a lot of it is I have actually attracted it in. I didn't go out and try to chase it or say that this is what I, I want. Um, it did just kind of come to me. And that's how the universe works. And this is the really cool thing about uh, when we talk about frequencies is because when we start to practice generating frequencies on command, mm -hmm. gratitude, happiness, joy, what we're doing, we're not only making ourselves feel good, and you know, creating a space for us to heal in our physical bodies, but that's the energy that we are projecting out into the universe, into the world. So that's also what's going to come back, right? Because what goes out must come back. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, um, I think that a really good practice for all of us is to, Dr. Joe Dispenza talks a lot about this. Begin to feel the emotion. So in this case, happiness. Begin to feel happiness even though what we see in our physical environment may not be what we quote unquote want to make mm -hmm. us happy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So again, it just comes back to aligning our personal body with the vibration mm -hmm. of happiness or whatever it is we're seeking to bring into yeah, our life. I, I can hear a lot of vibrations, energy, and you are into that healing spirituality of way of living or spiritual. Spiritual is not a big thing. It's spiritual is a very simple thing. And 
actually people just get bogged down by mixing up spirituality into different different layers whether it is religion they mix up with religion they mix up with all sorts of things but actually spiritually is nothing according to me it's just like understanding you and knowing you and then also acknowledging the way you are just the way you are and also acknowledging all your bodily needs and uh, rather than you know looking out for something which is not within you and you are trying to look out somewhere else well you have to look in first within you and that's real spirituality is to me but having said that like doing in it when i was talking to energies and vibrations you said so does happiness also gives effects or impacts from other humans energies from other elements of environment whether it is nature whether it is the animals when we are around everything in this universe does that also gives us that extra trigger of happiness so called what do you what's your take on it i say absolutely 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 and the reason being is in our brains we have these things called mirror neurons and mirror uh -huh. neurons they soak in everything that we see so mm -hmm. if we see somebody experiencing happiness our brain, these mirror neurons register that as we are experiencing happiness. It's the same thing for negative emotions, but surrounding ourselves with positive uplifting people is so important because um, energies are real and we all have, we're such powerful uh, beings, you know, and we affect everything that we come into contact with. Now, when it comes to the natural world, this is our quote unquote natural state of being. So when uh -huh. we take ourselves out of civilization and away from technology and we reconnect with like the primordial essence of this planet, we're also taken into that state within us. So, I mean, there are things that we can do in the physical to bring about a higher, a, you know, an elevated uh -huh. state of emotional being, you know, taking care of the physical body, eating healthy, drinking a lot of water, doing right. things that are natural for the body. Mm. Um, I believe that happiness is a natural state that one of the natural states of uh, being human. Uh -huh. That's why we feel happy in nature, because that uh -huh. is our natural emotional state. So when mm. we're not feeling happy, it's a sign that something is off in our in our environment or within ourselves that needs to be addressed. Right. So basically, I, I hear you, Shela, that you said it is within us. So are there three layers just like when people say or when coaches some of the coaches they say okay mind body and soul so are there different layers of happiness for body different happiness for mind different happiness for soul mm -hmm. different happiness what's what's your view on it that's a really interesting question that one <laughs> i have not thought of um <laughs> i would say that like well, you, are, you, are, you are motivating me to ask you questions because this is something that uh, gives me a good excitement of this topic. Mm. Yeah, I, I love it too. And I love being asked questions. It's really, it's fun for me. Mm. Um, I would say that like the, the body, the mind, the soul are going to process happiness in a different way because they are their own separate you know, um, mm -hmm. or in their own dimension, so to say. So the physical body processes the emotion of happiness by releasing dopamine, by re releasing the feel good chemical. When the mind experiences happiness, there's a sense of calmness and a sense of peace and relaxation and acceptance. And when the soul experiences happiness, I think that that's really where we start to dive into the bliss state Right. you know the soul is the part of us that's connected to everything so yes. it's like melting back into who we truly are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm loving it shela this is really amazing what i am uncovering as well because people look out for happiness they try to bring happiness they try to you know imagine happiness and um, or when you have dreams and when those dreams don't become true or don't become something then you are always into that mode of finding to have that happiness whether i would able to achieve or not but most importantly happiness is a very vast topic in in a way itself because it's not something called thing it's not something called as you said that you can buy but yeah when you buy something you feel good about it 
So feeling good about it is called happiness or feeling pleasantness or blissful is called happiness is, was a, is a very much analytical question and every individual has their own needs, own wants, own desires. So to me, happiness uh, with what learning from you is like, okay, doing things is, is one of the key things that you have to keep doing things so to be, to be happy to uncover your happiness, I would call it, rather than just doing things and not happy. You won't know whether you are happy or not unless you do things. Mm. Just like, you know, unless you experience something, you won't say it was a pleasant or it was an unpleasant experience. So to me, in this uncertain world, what would be your take on this? Like people get fearful, people are very much fear and thinking that, okay, I don't do this. So if they don't do it, they won't know whether they will be happy or not to start with. And they will always be in that cloud of whether to do or not to do. So what would be your message to our listeners who are listening to this topic? Happiness is when it comes to doing things. And unless you do things, you won't experience. And unless you won't experience, you won't know. Mm -hmm. what, what's your take on it? I think that, you know, like you said, it's, it's important to allow ourselves to experience things and to experience mm. life and connections, right. because like you said, if we don't have those experiences, we will never know. And this mm. life is meant to be experienced and that's how we learn and grow. So honestly, um, for people who are, who have failed at something and maybe are like afraid to take that next step or to make any sort of change in life, mm -hmm. it really comes down to a shift in perspective, shifting the way that we view failures, because if we can see failure as a stepping stone mm -hmm. to our success that mm -hmm. eliminates some of the anxiety or just the feeling of defeat that comes with failure because we have to fail we're, we're learning in the process and failing is actually a really beautiful thing because it means that right. you tried you got up you you did your Julia. best you, you fell down but you can get back up again and eventually yeah. if you keep trying you will succeed and you will reach whatever destination you want to be at. And it's, it goes same thing with happiness. Like it's, it's like strengthening a muscle, the muscle of our heart when it comes to generating feelings and allowing ourselves to feel happy. It's a process. It comes with time. But the way that I view it is I would rather fail trying because failure is the only thing that's truly um, determined. But if we try, now we're giving ourselves another chance to actually succeed. Yes. Um, and so in that process, it, it, we build character and we build strength. And I think that the transformation that we go through as an individual, as we're quenching the fear, is greater than actually achieving that, that goal or destination, whatever we're, we're striving mm -hmm. toward. So once again, it, it's all it's all an inner in our journey and the fear. It's just a voice. It's a voice that we can choose to listen to. And it's also a voice that we can choose to drown out and wow. tap into our heart. I love this. Fear is just a voice. I love it. This is beautiful. And I think this is where people don't understand when they are fearful. They think, again, this is like a happiness, like fearful is something they think that it is affecting them when they are allowing them to affect, basically. And I get the message here very loud and clear. Allowing yourself to experience is the first step of a human being to experience that and not be fearful, but be fearless to experience that. And then only you know. And failure is nothing but just, again, a voice, I would say just like the fear is a voice. I, you, you said it right, anal uh, a great analogy that you did just now. I uncovered myself that, yeah, people do think that fearful is something they always like, think that there is a big issue when it's fear, but there is no issue. It's just a voice in your inner voice telling you that you are fearful, no? So I love it. Now this I is great. Yeah, um, I want to add one more thing, just real quick onto please that. Go. Uh, no, no, please go ahead. About the, so when failure happens, it's sometimes, sometimes it's divine redirection mm -hmm. and that that wasn't supposed to happen. And so I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm not perfect, but I'm still in the process of, of growing and becoming the best me that I can be. But something that I do is I have 
shifted the way that um, I see failure in my life. Oh my gosh, I totally just lost my train of thought. Um, <laughs> um, it, oh, will come. it came, it came. So a celebration of the failure. I'm learning wow. to celebrate my failures because Lovely. there is something better coming that is more aligned. Yeah. And that was just kind of like a mile marker, like, hey, look at look at where you're at, look at what you could have. So I think that when we're talking about achieving or letting mm -hmm. go of fear, anything like this, um, it's a process of being able to detach from the outcome. And that's really where, when we find happiness is when we're just open and receptive to divine forces and to ourselves. But I think you said a very good point here. You raised a very good uh, point that people get stuck into it and they don't accept it just the way they want to explore or they want to keep moving. And part of the reason is that, that your emotional well-being is affected mm -hmm. and your emotional well-being is under your control. If you allow them to get stuck, it will stuck. If you don't allow them to get stuck, it, they, it won't stuck. It will just keep moving. So when you said that embrace the failures and you are trying to still uncover those failures and you are trying to say that the positive, I love the positiveness that you said was there is something better than that has to, is to come on from that failure. That failure was not a failure. It was just an experience that is leading towards more better. Mm -hmm. And we are all human beings as a hopeful human beings. Hope is one of the biggest thing, just like kindness is one of the biggest thing in our embedded in our body, mind, and soul. I think that's a positive outcome that I take it from here is like never ever get uh, stuck by a failure or saying that, okay, I am failed and, and that's why I'm sad now. It leads to sadness. It doesn't tell you or give you a hope of happiness because you are stuck in there. But if you think positively, as you said, that there is something better is yet to come. That failures, we got to keep learning out of that, but you have to also be hopeful that there is better coming out of it. So you are trying to deal with those failures. You are trying to reflect on those failures. And that's the best part of the outcome that as a human being we can do, which can lead to happiness, which can lead to blissful, and which can lead to all sorts of satisfaction, inner and outer. So I take that as a positive message to our audiences who are listening today to you um, to uncover this topic. It's not a topic where you would easily try to say that this is the be all and end all. It's a continuous ongoing process that happiness leads you to move forward. Because when you feel good about yourself, when you feel good about others, when you feel good about our surroundings, that's where you are creating this happiness magic. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I feel is good because I was going through all your journey and particularly what is life? Is life stuck to sadness? Is life stuck to happiness? Is life stuck to some emotional seriousness or emotional issues what is it like you know so you have described it very well in that your journey is here we are all here to experience and we are not here to finish one task or two tasks or three tasks thinking that once i finish this i will be happy once i not finished it i'm not happy and this is not all about finishing a task or finishing your journey earlier than what you would know, not know because you are keeping exploring, right? I remember recently one of the greatest singers who passed away in, in India and she said that, you know, she was asked a question that like when you, are, when you achieve something, awards and all sorts of things, what is more desired that yet to come for you in terms of achievement? And she said that, you should never be ever fulfilled when you get awarded by an award or a certificate or achievement, thinking this is the end. That achievement is just another step to move forward, to create more and create more and more. You never end with that. And that's how who we humans are as infinite, right? We keep on our journey. So we don't know whether we... 
people may believe whether we have a reincarnation or another life or whether we come back after our disappearance but there is one thing is sure we are infinite because we don't know ourselves yet and we are here to uncover ourselves so let me ask you another important question for you just this is a not a question this is just a great uh, conversation that we are having today about this topic um what in your world that after achieving and keeping achieving and keeping moving how to keep that hope how to keep that blissful moment intact within yourself to carry you in whatever you do so you know sometimes you do things for others sometimes you do things for yourself sometimes you keep doing thinking that okay somebody has told you that's why you're doing it but in your world of happiness when it comes to happiness when it attached to because you have said before also you should never be attached to you should always detach yourself from all the things and that's where you will find your own self so happiness to you when it comes to doing things and when it comes to looking at others and doing what would be your kind of message to the listeners how do they should evolve how do they should manifest their own journey mm. to 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 make that uh, you know intact that blissful hope how to keep that intact it's a very deep i know but it's something that i wanted to uncover from you it's a really great question and that's like so, that's like such a big part of the journey yeah. Yeah, we can it is, it is. Hap- we've all felt happiness, but yeah. have we all came to be able to sustain that happiness? That's a different story. That's right. That's right. And yeah, so from my own experience, what has helped me the most is figuring out who I am and accepting all of the different assets and facets of myself, like understanding how I work, understanding how I show up. um in relationships understanding what feels good to me in my life and what doesn't and then creating a life around what feels good so on a spiritual level i have my morning routine that i swear by and i do it every day i have a daily yoga and meditation and journaling practice so every single day i set aside time to tap into myself and to actively cultivate the feeling of happiness and gratitude So heart coherence meditations are something I do all the time. Um cuz when the body is um in an elevated state, we can create. When we are in survival mode, it turns the genes in our body off and we cannot create. So we talked about this a little bit earlier, being in survival mode, like we have to have our basic needs met in order for us to tap into cool. these higher states of being. Yeah, yeah. So um figuring out who you are how how you show up in the world and um like getting clear like if you want to be happy it's a it's a dedication and commitment because that means that there's probably going to be a lot of shedding and letting go of things that may be interfering with our happiness and once again um i do believe that happiness is a natural state of being for humans and that th- that's what we're supposed to feel so um the unhappiness is stemming from unnatural either beliefs or actions or behavioral patterns that were playing that are playing out in our life um so think healthy happy healthy a healthy body healthy mind um is like that's the space that we want to be in to bring in happiness and it almost comes naturally when we yeah. just take care of the physical body properly so you said that survival is one of the key basic basic things of human being for our well being that if we are have got all the survival needs then we can tap into all sorts of things but if people for people who are not yet into the survival mode they are struggling from day in and day out uh, how do they find happiness great question and it's it's really the same process of mm-hmm. this when when you're in a state that you don't like it's really important to practice putting the blinders on to everything that you quote unquote don't like not wow. saying that you're you're um not being cool. responsible but it's a matter of feeling within ourselves feeling the feeling of happiness that is going to attract to us happiness so we all have the ability to change our lives and to get out of survival mode um and it really starts with making that 
decision that that's something that you want to do and also that you are worthy to receive what you want right. because if we don't believe ourselves to be worthy we mm. it's nearly impossible to think thoughts that will align with what we want mm. so we have to believe ourselves to be worthy and we all are worthy to receive everything that we've ever asked for mm. and it is a process of clearing and, and releasing that actually calls things in to our life. Yeah, so for people who are uh, um, thinking that, okay, like a, as you said, like we put blinders and we put false, there are some people who depend on others' happiness. They assume they are happy and they want to be become like them. So then only they will be happy. That's what in their mind is, basically. They haven't mm -hmm. understood the real meaning is, is it like a attachments or fake imagination that because they have not experienced it, but they are looking at others and they are thinking that, oh, he has got everything, so he's happy. Not realizing whether he's happy or not, but only just because he has got all the attachments and all the material things, they think that it is, they must be happy. And that they must be happy puts their emotional well-being into a danger spot where now they are looking for that attachments. And when they don't get those attachments, then they are sad, basically, or they always moan, or they always moan about it, right? Mm -hmm. What exactly, you know, you should tell or in your experience that because you didn't have at one stage anything. You were all on your own, no material things. In fact, I heard your stories like you went in the woods where there are no laws, there are no things. And I was loving it, that conversation which we had, that you had nothing, but you still were finding that blissful moments in that. And at a very young age when you could have done so many things as a young. So what kind of that message you would like to tell our listeners the experience that you had? And happiness is not something just because others are happy doesn't mm. mean that you are not happy or just because others, yeah. Tell me about that. Yeah, um, so the, what keeps running through my mind is the need for us as a collective to disassociate the word happiness from material possession or success yes. because we can achieve and achieve and achieve but yeah that may it may not be doing something that that ultimately makes us happy mm. and this perspective, this leads into expectation. So the person who doesn't have much and is, you know, sad and crying and sees somebody who quote unquote um, has everything is holding an expectation that material right. happiness, I'm sorry, this phone never rings. So no, that's okay. Yeah, right. Background. Um, there's an expectation that the material happiness is going to be what brings in the happiness. Mm -hmm. um, so for the person who's seeing somebody achieve success, I would say you, you have not a clue what else is going on in their life. And that person could be yeah. extremely miserable and bogged down by their material possessions. Um, so for me, coming, coming into my story, uh, I grew up in the middle of America. So I was raised middle class. We didn't have like, we weren't like super wealthy, but I mean, we had nice things. Mm. I was raised Christian and that was like all that I knew. Um, I didn't know that racism was a thing until mm. I moved to Colorado. So I lived a very yeah. sheltered life. And sure. when yeah. I started to see the world, I was like, whoa, I really want to see the world. I, there was just this calling within me to um, go the, take the beaten path. Um, I just inherently knew that the material possessions were not going to bring me happiness and the reason that i actually did this was because i wanted to find happiness mm -hmm. before i went out and found my career or you know made my my mark in the world um because it, it really didn't matter i tried to work normal jobs and it just i, I couldn't do it i just there was something in me that said no you cannot do this i could not yeah. hold a normal job so i was like okay <laughs> i'm just gonna let this go and I'll move to the oh. woods for a little while. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so it, like, we don't have to let go of our everyday lives. And I said this in no, the last video, no, no. but um, that's what I needed to do to just <laughs> let go of the distraction of the physical world so I could tap into myself and really get clear on who I was. 
Yeah, point to my point was to all the listeners who are listening and even including myself and others who are listening, like is accumulation that we crave for or we aim for that we want to accumulate, no matter whether it is we want to be around with people who make us happy or whether we want material things that make us happy or whatever we say, everybody's needs are different and they think that they get happiness through this channel, that channel. But the bottom line and the reality is no matter how much as you said, like we are so much infinite that we will never get satisfied if we try to accumulate and trying to say that I will accumulate that, I will achieve this and then keep achieving, achieving or keep accumulating, accumulating, but that's not happiness. Happiness comes within and it can also do with simple things, even like talking to a person or saying good words will give you that happiness or like understanding one person will also give you happiness. So according to me, it's quite spiritually and emotionally, our well-being is completely dependent on what we say, what we breathe, what we talk. That itself is to me is happiness because if you're not happy, you won't talk to anyone. If you are happy, you will <laughs> speak your mind, you know? But if you're not happy or if you're not blissful inside, then you won't do things that you would like to do. Then you will always just sit there and just listen to others and do whatever they say. So that becomes a journey of not yours, but their journey. They are making you live their journey. Mm -hmm. So in terms of that, like um, it's very well to understand from you and to see uh, from my point of view and from my audience point of view are listening here that accumulation doesn't give you happiness take it out of their mind that just because you're accumulating that's all temporary because everything is temporary in this universe that you whether you achieve success or whether you call it a success by accumulating things and saying that success means happiness what's your take on that how do you define happiness versus success or does success means happy or happiness means success how do you put that I think that both of these words, success and happiness, they mean something different to all of us because yeah. we all see the world differently. There are different tiers and different levels of success. We have material success. Um, there is emotional success, I, I may call it, just being in a state of feeling peace and centeredness and then spiritual success where you feel like you have you know, a connection to, to a higher source, to a higher power. Um, yeah. When I think of the word success, though, I think of like striving to achieve something like we're going after something. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about happiness, happiness isn't something that we can go after. It's something that we have to surrender to that we allow to come into us. Yeah. So there's a misconception that success means completion of certain things will give you a success. Whereas to me, success is not any completion of anything because success means doing things. To me, simple things or whatever you do, that itself is success because you have been given the power to do things mm -hmm. and not like, okay, success cannot be defined to me that, okay, I got this graduation certificate, so I'm now successful. No, it doesn't define you with a certificate or an award or anything that you achieve, whether you make 10 properties or whether you have bank balance or whatever, that's not success to me. Because to me, that is just doing things that you have done and doing things was a success that you did it. Had you not done it, you would not have achieved those. That's the simple thing to me. So doing things is success. So, but in terms of like what you described happiness is, um, versus success and you're right absolutely right that success is not something that can be called or like structured and things like that but happiness coming back to the happiness with you like is the mind happiness when your mind is in a state of mind happiness is it a state of mind or happiness is a state of your bodily need that you want to achieve something and then you achieved and then you are calling it like i'm happy now because i've been able to do that or been able to do not do that how do you make this 
happiness with our mind, our body, and you know, how do you define that with mm -hmm. happiness? Mm -hmm. How do you compare that with your mind and body? Like your mind may say something, your heart may say something as we say, but then we do, we do choose either our heart or we do choose our mind and we make it happy for our own mind and body because that's what it is craving for. Your thoughts comes to do something and then you listen to your thoughts and sometimes you don't listen to your thought, but you listen to your heart and you go against your thoughts, even though you know that you are going to uh, have a problem or you even though you know that you can ex uh, expect that something bad is going to happen or it's not going to be right, yet you do it for the sake of your heart or for your mind. You know, either of the one you choose to satisfy. So does happiness is a state of mind? Or does happiness is something comes within your heart? As you said before, it is within us. But mm -hmm. I wanted to uncover more within in spiritual sense. <laughs> so yeah. From a spiritual sense, I would say happiness starts with the heart. Like our our heart is one of the most um, incredible forms of technology that we have that mm -hmm. basically dictate how we how we experience life. So the way I like to view the heart and the mind is that the heart is in control, the heart is the leader, and the mind or intellect is a tool for the heart to use. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I like to see them as working in unison. And once again, this is a practice to be mm -hmm. able to put the ego aside and for the mind to not be put first, but to say, okay, this is what my heart is telling me to do. So now I'm going to use my rational brain to try to intellectualize how I want to move forward with this information. When we experience happiness, it's a, it's a, I mean, really any emotion, like what I'm seeing in my mind is just like, it's a full body, a full body experience. So when we're really in the emotion of happiness, it is a state of mind. What comes to me more is like a, a peaceful state of mind where right. we're in this mode of just accepting and we're embracing and we're grateful. It's mm -hmm. a, it's like saying yes to life. So the mind right. isn't thinking too much. The heart is in control. The body is relaxed, feels light, and we're moving forward. Do you think like trust is a big factor when it comes to happiness? Absolutely. Absolutely. This ties back to survival and not being able to create when we're not in a quote unquote safe space or there's something that uh, a survival need that needs to be taken care of. It's the same thing with feeling happiness. We can be around somebody and we can be super happy, but maybe that person, um, they have jealousy issues or they're just functioning from a lower yeah, vibration yeah, yeah, yeah. that will impact our emotional state of being. So it is, once again, this is why it's super important to be surrounding ourselves with people who are like-minded right. and who like are positive yeah. mm. and hold space for us. Yeah, and no. also, it's important to practice discernment with who we are opening up and sharing our energy with, even though like maybe we've achieved a state where we're super happy and feel so good about our life and just want to share it with everybody. Not mm. everybody is going to be able to hold that space for us. So yes, trust is very important. Yeah, and then the next one is curiosity, because I think curiosity or being curious about things that will make you or that are hoping to make you happy, you know, so unless you are curious, you won't know whether you will be happy or not. Um, so like basically a childlike mind who wants to explore everything innocently, who wants to be curious innocently everything. Do you think that could be a state of mind or state of deeds that humans should never let go and thinking that, oh, I am adult now, I shouldn't be curious or I am too old for that to become curious and let go of your actual curiosity when you are little and you explore and you achieve so much when you are little. But as you grow and as you grow your mind and thinking that oh no this i can't do this anymore or i can't do that anymore what's your what's your take on that when it comes to happiness like does that leads to non-happiness or become a life at a stagnant our life becomes stagnant if we are not curious after a I certain say, point i would say absolutely like we've talked a lot about movement 
everything in the universe is always moving. So it's always natural for us as humans to be in a constant state of movement. Yeah. Curiosity. I, I love that you brought this up because I, I really think that that is a part of the answer, like being able to embody curiosity yeah. rather than expectation. And a lot of us, as we move into adulthood, we have these expectations like I can't do this. Or mm-hmm. if I do this, I'm going to fail. But mm-hmm. as children, we hadn't, we have yet to experience a lot of those failures and had, you know, we don't know what the real world is like. So we still have that sense of, wow, the world is magical. And because we were in that mindset of, oh my gosh, like what, what might I find? The world is magical. And, and kids experience a ex- completely different reality than, than we do as adults. Yeah. Um, and it's absolutely possible to hold on to that or even to recultivate that sense of childlike wonder and awe as adults. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big part of coming back into ourselves because that inner child, that inner child is always there. That part of us that does want to explore and experience life. It's just a matter of tapping in and giving that our inner voice, that space to be heard. Yeah. My final question is like, uh, how do you define happiness when it comes to, do you listen to your own intuitional voice? to create happiness and make happy yourself? Or do you listen to others' voice, others' success stories that could really make you happy? What's your fine line between these two? Because we, as you said rightly, and we do want people who are like-minded surrounded by us so that we are all the time blissful and bounce back our ideas and happiness. But is your happiness your depends on your inner voice, intuition, intuition, we call it. So intuitional, when you say that to listen to yourself or to listen to others who are around us, who are like-minded us, but does that really, we have to find happiness through them or happiness can be found from us? What's your, this is my final point. I think it's um, important to close with the, realization once again that happiness can only be generated from within ourselves so when we are around people who also are generating their own happiness what happens is we come together and we get to experience more happiness because there are now two beings who have generated happiness and that creates a stronger energetic effect so for me i I, I love listening to people's success stories. I know that yeah. I am not going to receive happiness or success by watching them or um, interacting with someone, but I know that I can get inspired and I can gain um, motivation or inspiration to then take with me and apply that to my own life and my own creative pursuits. So I think it's always really great to learn from people and um, to continue to connect and expand our network and yeah, test the limits of, of what we know ourselves capable of doing because we we truly never know until we try. I love it. I love it. This is brilliant, uh, Shayla. I was excited to talk to you about this topic and I hope I have not asked you too many complicated questions, but it is all my simple questions that I wanted to understand from you. But Finally, like as to all our listeners who are listening and the audiences who are listening to this topic, happiness, like happiness is not something as you can see from Shayla, it just comes within from us. But yes, we do create more happiness by bringing those like-minded people around us. We do have that choice of making our own environment so that we are always in that happiness or searching for that happiness as a curious to soul. As a curious soul, we all are curious, but we got to keep up that curiosity going, no matter what state of age, mind you are into. And that's the positive outcome. But the most positive outcomes that I came out today, and listeners might agree, resonate to some extent, is never ever say that this is the end of it and always always look for that extra and say that your failures are not your failures they are only your experiences and i love the analogy you said fear is just a voice fear is not a real thing and i think this to listeners in the uncertain world that we are living in today we need to understand that fear is just your voice but your voice inner voice also can be 
opposite of fear, which is fearless. So try to bring those fearlessness in you and try to live your journey as freedom, as free as possible to make it a real spiritual journey as Shela has uncovered from, you can see if she can do it at a less than 18 and she started her journey and today she's still doing it, then doing things is more important. So she is doing so many things. She's a coach, she's a personal development, she's a yoga, meditation, you name it, tarot reading and all sorts of she is doing. But that's the well-being that when you do many things, your well-being is checked by every single thing that you do and you feel good about yourself. And then you spread that energy, as she said, and the vibes that you bring. So energies are very important for a happiness. So we need to spread that energy and we need to take that energy. But final point, I want to also touch on this topic that you did, that becoming a good listener. So just talking is not happiness listening to others also gives you happiness. Mm -hmm. And I take that as a final kind of a sword, a final nail in the coffin that you did was beautifully said that listening is very important. And in these uncertain times, what more you could do than listen to others, resonate with themselves, collect themselves around you and just make your journey more better, more better for you and for yourself. And then once you become better, once you are self-aware, then you will always pass that energy to everyone. So I take this uh, beautiful opportunity now to ask Shela the final message that you would like to give to our audience. After summarizing all this, I hope I was trying to grasp everything that you said in this whole talk conversation that we had a beautiful trying to nail out some of the finer points and I did that, but what's your final message to the audience and the listeners who are listening to this beautiful topic, happiness, when it comes to your emotional well-being, you can define your own emotional well-being through this topic. Absolutely. I think that my final message would be that it's always a choice and that we always have the choice mm. to be happy, to not be happy. And it's a process that's going to be a little bit challenging and maybe will bring us out of our comfort zones, but we will grow and we will evolve and develop such an incredible understanding of who we are and know how we show up in the world by making the choice to choose to go up in, in vibration. So wherever you are, whatever you may be striving towards, you can. It's all a choice. And if you may quote unquote fail, it's an opportunity for you to get back up and to do that thing again, mm -hmm. utilizing the lesson that you learned when you fell. Nothing is ever permanent. And we are in control of our reality. The power really is in our hands. And it is time for us all to collectively rise and embody mm -hmm. the power mm -hmm. that is within us, the power in our hearts and our souls. Yeah, I love that final message to the audience that power is within us, power is in our hands, and we have the power to collectively rise, and we have the power to individually rise as well. So the more you do, uh, put that power back in within you and not depend on somebody else's power for mm -hmm. you to live that journey. So I think that's a powerful message with the power word. Because power is something, again, is not a thing that you can buy. Power is something that you have to feel and realize. And I think self-realization is the key. But so once you have self-realized, you will get that power. And you should tell all the time to yourself that you have the power to do. I think once you keep saying that you have the power to do yourself, you will never be dependent on others. So I am absolutely... Um, amazed by your beautiful conversation, but also what an insight that we had today. I should really thank you, um, Shela, for these beautiful insights of this topic. And spiritually we are, so freedom of free spirit is our topic, but our topic is, our theme is also we are one. 
So as Shaila said that we have to collectively, we can rise with the power and we can also rise with individually. It gives me an immense uh, satisfaction of having a great conversation with you and understanding that uh, emotional well-being, we are all one, is the main criteria of the whole human being, the, the way we are. So let's stick together. We are one. Freedom of free spirited. Express your mind and soul. And I take this opportunity to thank once again, Shaila. This is a great, great in conversation and I would love to have more and more of these conversations with you in the future. So listeners, please be aware that if you need to talk to Shayla or get in touch with her, we will be sending her link below and you can get in touch with us. Any questions, any queries, she'll always be there to help, happy to help and always. support always as she is a freedom free spirited anyway. So thanks once again, Shayla. Without further now, I'm going to conclude this with the final message that happiness is not something that you can buy, but happiness you have to find within yourself. Thank you so much once again, Shaila. We're going to stop Shaila. this now. Okay. Goodbye.